Hi everyone and welcome to the video. This is part 3 of the super egg drop problem. I'll be introducing the OKN time and space solution for the super egg drop problem. I would really advise watching the previous videos, but since I'll use some notations and ideas from those videos. So with that caveat in mind, let's get started. In the previous video, we used binary search to calculate dp and k quickly. For each fixed n k, we would use binary search on i to find the i that minimizes the maximum of dp i minus 1 k minus 1 and dp n minus i k. Now, this works pretty well, but oftentimes while trying to speed up dynamic programs, it's also very useful to try to fix a fewer number of variables and try to solve the problem for the remaining variables slightly faster. Now, if you play a lot with the recurrence above, you might get this idea. Let's first fix the variable k. So let's set it to say 20 or 30, just any fixed constant. And let us try to draw how the recurrence would look like as we vary i and n simultaneously. Well, for starters, as we vary n, the term dp i minus 1, k minus 1 will not change because it doesn't contain n in its arguments. So we can just plot it as we vary i, which as we discussed previously is an increasing function because we are searching more and more floors as i increases. Now for the hard part. What about dp n minus i k? It has both n in it and i. So how can we vary both and plot it on a 2D axis? Well, here's a useful trick. Instead of plotting dp n minus i k for varying n and i, we will instead draw n curves representing dp 2 minus i k, dp 3 minus i k, dp 4 minus i k, and so on. As we vary all the way to dp capital N minus i k. For each of these curves, we will show how they vary as we vary i. If this seems too abstract, then let's see how this works. First, we'll try to plot dp2 minus i k, say the blue curve. As we discussed before, it is a decreasing function as i increases because we are searching fewer and fewer buildings. Now, we'll try plotting dp3 minus i k, the orange curve. You'll notice something very interesting about how I plot dp3 minus i k. At each index i, I made sure that the orange curve, dp3 minus i k, in this case, is above the blue curve, dp2 minus i k. This is because for fixed i, dp3 minus i k is always at least dp2 minus i k, as we're searching one more building with the same number of eggs. The same can be said on dp4 minus i k. For every single index i, its value is at least dp3 minus i k. And the same thing can again be said on dp5 minus i k and dp6 minus i k and so on, until dp capital N minus i k as shown in the figure. Now remember that in the last video we said that the index i that minimizes the recurrence is actually the intersection of both dp i minus 1 k minus 1, the yellow curve, and dp n minus i k. So let us zoom in on the intersection of all of these curves with dp i minus 1 k minus 1, or the yellow curve. You'll notice something very interesting or maybe not so interesting if you see what's happening. Namely that the indices are monotonically increasing. This is primarily because of the monotonicity of the dp function with respect to n. Now would be a good time to take a step back and reflect on some of the conclusions we have so far. We showed that if we somehow fix k and consider dp n minus i k for all values of n from 2 all the way to capital N, there seems to be a relationship between the i that minimizes the recurrence, in that the minimizing i, denoted as i n star in this case, are monotonically increasing as you increase n. 
this very simple yet powerful observation will be more than enough to give us an OK on time solution for the problem. Now, before moving forward, I can almost hear some people disgruntled or upset, and the reason being a question I too once had. How was I supposed to know that I needed to fix K and vary N and I? And the answer to your question is, you don't. You actually don't need to fix K and vary I and N. You can choose to fix N and vary K and I. And this will also give you the exact same speed up to OK N time, but in a slightly different way. The crucial observation here is to notice that DP N K is monotonically increasing on I, monotonically decreasing on N, and monotonically decreasing on K. This monotonicity in all of these variables is really what leads to the faster solutions that have been presented so far by searching a monotonic space faster. And that's essentially it. All right, now going back to the problem, we will first, as noted earlier, fix k. We will initialize n to 2 and i to 1. Now, as long as the yellow curve, or dp i minus 1, k minus 1, is below the current dp n minus i, k, then we will move i forward as its intersection point with dp i minus 1, k minus 1, or the yellow curve, must be to the right. So, in this case, we move i forward one element. Now, dp 2 minus i, k is below the yellow curve, so we know that the intersection point happened before index i for n equals 2. So we calculate dp2k in the same way explained in the previous video. Next, since we have calculated dp2k, we increase n to 3. The crucial observation to note is that there is no way we miss the intersection point of dp3k with the yellow curve. This is because, as we discussed earlier, the intersections are monotonically increasing. We compare dp3 minus i, k to the yellow curve and observe that it's slightly above the yellow curve, so we move i one step forward. This time, dp3 minus i, k is now below the yellow curve, so the intersection point is at i, or one index before i. We again calculate dp3k using the equation from the last video, and increase n to 4. This time, dp4 minus i k is already below the yellow curve, so we know that the intersection point is at i or one index before, and we calculate dp4k. We continue this process until we have calculated dpnk for all n from 1 to capital N. Here's the pseudocode to do this. First, we will define dp to be an n plus 1 by k plus 1 2d array and handle the base cases of the recurrence as discussed in the previous videos. Then, we will loop over k from 1 to capital K, and for each fixed k, we will calculate dp and k for all n using the procedure we just went through. Namely, set n equals 1, i equals 1, and while n is less than or equal to capital N, we check if dp i minus 1 k minus 1, or the yellow curve, is above dp n minus i k, or the current blue curve. If it is, then we know that the intersection for n happened at index i or i minus 1, so we calculate dp n k and increase n by 1. Otherwise, then we just move index i one step forward. Once the while loop is terminated, we will have calculated dp n k for all values of n in O capital N time. The final step, once we exit the loop, is to finally return dp capital N capital K. The total runtime is O K iterations times O of n for each iteration, which in total is O K n time. We use an extra space of OKN space to store the DP table, so the solution also takes additional OKN space. Note that the space requirement can be improved to O of N, but I honestly feel it's not worth your time to get over that optimization. I might make a separate video on these kind of space optimizations for a few dynamic programming problems if there's enough interest in them. Thank you for watching the video. This is part 3 of the super egg draw problem. 
If you liked the video, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.